Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fifth chapter. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake. But the fishermen had gone out of them and were fishing and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. My friends, in 1982, children laughed and were amazed from a segment on Sesame Street when the puppets Bert and Ernie went fishing. More specifically, in the short three-minute Muppet sketch, Bert and Ernie demonstrated to the entire world that all that was needed to catch fish was simple words. Here, fishy, fishy, fishy. And the fish literally jumped into the boat, and the louder that they called, the more the fish responded by jumping into the boat. It was that easy. Yell out. Here, fishy, fishy, fishy. And the fish responded, responded to the word, the call of Bert and Ernie. Now, if only fishing were that easy, my friends. In fact, wouldn't it be great if all of life worked this way? Just think about it. What if we spoke and then things automatically happened? Just think if our words were powerful enough to make others obey us, and if our words could create things out of nothing. I'm sure we would not only call out for fish to jump in our boats, but we would also speak other words to make life a bit easier. Laundry be done. Lawn be mowed. Dishes be done. Cold and flu be gone. Cancer, death, suffering be gone. However, as you know, life does not work this way, for our words are just not that powerful. And because they are not powerful, they are neither heard by others nor respected. More often than not, our words that we speak fall on deaf ears. No wonder why we put such little value on words these days. No wonder why so many people in our society are yelling and nobody is listening. All of this doesn't stop people from speaking words, though. For example, politicians make apparently powerful campaign promises. They speak words of hope, only for us to later realize that their campaign words were empty and weak. They were unable to deliver on their words. Let us not only pick on politicians, for they are an easy target. Let us think about the weakness of words spoken in the workforce. Many of you have experienced the joys of hearing those powerful words. Yes, those powerful words of joy spoken by your employer or supervisor. Only later to find out that these words were feeble 
Otherwise stated, powerful words were spoken to you, giving you promises of some sort of job promotion or some raise, but budget cuts and lower sales shattered the once bold words. Hitting a little more close to home, we see just how powerless our words are in the family. Each year, the following words are spoken with sincerity, with conviction, and with power. These words, I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, to love and cherish you in sickness and health, and to be with you until death do us part. Yes, these words are spoken at hundreds of thousands of marriages across the United States with conviction and power only to result in some 50% of marriages ending in divorce. Divorce that tragically results in the death of a family, pain and unsettledness, distrust and so forth. Dear friends, our words seem to lack power, do they not? We cannot call fish into the boat. We cannot create with our words, and we more often than not do the very opposite of what we say. Our sinful hearts, they actually corrupt the words that we speak. Our words cannot produce and are not powerful, for we are stained and corrupted by sin. Indeed, we constantly sin in what we think, in what we do, and especially what we say. O Lord, have mercy on you. Lord, have mercy on me too. We see something quite the opposite, though. Yes, we see something quite the opposite in our gospel reading from the gospel of Luke this morning. In Luke's gospel, Jesus, the Lord of creation, And the Lord of the lake calls fish and orders these fish into nets that had not caught a single thing the entire night before. In fact, Jesus called so many fish into the nets that the boats began to sink. Now, while this is a profound miracle for us to be in awe of, we must not get distracted by the large catch of fish. In other words, my friends, like many of Jesus' miracles, we can easily get caught up in the miracle itself and miss the real point of the miracle itself, the point that Jesus wishes to show us and give to us. That is to say, the key to today's gospel lesson is not necessarily the fish, but the power of of Jesus' word. I repeat, the point is the power of Jesus' word. You see, that morning, Jesus had been using Peter's boat as a pulpit. We do not know exactly what Jesus was preaching, but we do know this. The people were gathering around listening to Jesus. After speaking the word to the people, To show the crowd and the fishermen that his word was no ordinary word, Jesus tells Peter to push out into that deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Yes, to let down those nets for a catch. And Peter lists all those reasons why he shouldn't, and then he says this, But at your word, at your word, Jesus, I will let down the nets. And you know the rest of the story. The nets were filled. The fish were flopping in the boat. The boats were sinking. And then after the big catch, Jesus tells them that they haven't seen anything yet because the disciples will be soon catching people in the same way. You see, dear friends, the real miracle that day on that water is that the great catch of fish happens solely because of the word, the power of Jesus' word. And unlike the powerless and weak and dull, feeble words of mankind, Jesus' words, yes, Jesus' word does stuff. Stuff happens with Jesus when he speaks. When Jesus spoke in the scriptures, dead people came back to life. When Jesus spoke, demons actually shuddered. When Jesus spoke, the sea actually bowed down and obeyed Jesus. When Jesus spoke, the blind saw, the deaf heard. And today, yes, today, Jesus still speaks to you 
and he speaks to me. Every time that we hear, yes, every time we hear the word, the Lord Jesus is speaking to us. And when his word is proclaimed, stuff happens. Indeed, when you were baptized, the water and the word were poured and spoken upon each and every one of you, marking you as the redeemed. You were actually bought from darkness and placed into the kingdom of light. You were snatched from the kingdom of darkness and put into the kingdom of heaven by that spoken word and that water applied to you. And when you stand every single Sunday here in this sanctuary, every single Sunday confessing that you are poor, miserable sinners, the Lord does not turn a deaf ear to you. Oh no, he does not turn a deaf ear to you, but he answers you through the mouth of his servant, the pastor, saying this to you, speaking this to you, I now forgive you of all of your sins. And when you come forward to this altar with open hands, you hear and you receive the body and the blood of Jesus Christ given to you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Now these are not just mere powerless, weak, dull, and feeble words. The water and the bread and the wine are not some symbolic prop. No, none of this nonsense, my friends. The Lord's word and his sacraments are powerful and they do stuff. You see, when you hear the Lord's word and receive his sacraments, you can know with absolute certainty that you are forgiven. Not just a little forgiven, not just partly forgiven, but 100% forgiven because Jesus says so and Jesus' word is powerful. You are forgiven in Christ. You see, the word of Jesus That gospel is not only the power of God unto your salvation here at St. Paul's, but it's also the very word that we get to share and proclaim for Minot, North Dakota, and the whole state of North Dakota, and for the ends of the earth. Some, though, yes, some, though, will tell us that we need to change the way the church worships and the way that the church speaks because we are told that the church is outdated and no longer has anything to offer. Some will tell you that what we need is a new kind of flashy evangelism program. Some have even suggested that the cross should be removed from the church because it is too offensive to see what Christ has done for us on that cross. But all of these things, my friends, are the thoughts of mankind and not of God. Instead, our Lord invites us today to set our faith firmly on the power of his word, the word of Christ crucified, and to believe what he tells us through this word. The word of God is powerful. It is the power of God to do miracles like call fish into nets, and it is the power of God to create faith and sustain faith and forgive sins in you and me and our neighbors. And for that reason, Jesus would have us listen and take to heart that the real miracle of the nets being filled was by his word alone. And it is by his word alone that he continues to fill the net of his gospel and bring more and more people into his church. So dear baptized saints, Dear precious baptized saints of St. Paul's Lutheran Church, Jesus' word is powerful. His word is no ordinary word. It has the power to change lives, the power to forgive sins, and the power to grant eternal life to you and to all who hear and believe the truth that it proclaims. So today, we continually receive his word, We hear it, and as a church, we spread it through confessing, and the Lord will take care of the rest, for we know that the Lord's word is not powerless, but powerful. Yes, the word is the power of God that we preach, is the power of God that we teach, is the power of God that we confess 
and believe today and forevermore. In the name of Jesus, amen.